good afternoon, everyone. I can see that still uh, some people are coming. The number of attendees is, is, is uh, slowly jumping up and up. So I hope you had a good lunch. Uh, you had a nice start of the week and that you will spend a very interesting hour today with us with some more information about Polish markets. Today we have invited an expert from uh, the Aurora Energy Research Company, Filip Piasecki, who will uh, take the word just uh, after me, after, uh, after this uh, invitation, and uh, I will do a small wrap up after his presentation. So we are uh, at this moment uh, ready to start. And uh, Philip, if, if you want to say a few words about yourself before you start your, uh, your presentation, that would be perfect. And if anybody uh, will have any questions uh, during Philip's presentation, please use the Q&A um, functionality of, this, of the Teams. Uh, feel free to write the questions during the presentation, but we will address all of them after, after we are uh, ready with all, uh, uh, all presentations. We will have uh, some time at the end to answer the questions. So, Philip, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Sina, and welcome everyone. Uh, thank you also very much for, for, for the invitation. It's my pleasure to speak today a bit more about the Polish market and our view on that. Uh, shortly, just to introduce from my side, so my name is Filip Pisecki. I'm an associate in, um, in our Berlin office of Aurora Energy Research. Uh, and I'm responsible for, from a content perspective, on uh, for, for our Polish power markets and generally looking at this market for more than for, for, for more than three years and actually looking at how much it has changed over the last couple of years. Um, and now I would probably would like to start off with the, with a little bit of a short uh, presentation on, on our side. Um, so if um, if let's let maybe let's start shortly with a little bit of introduction of who we are to give a bit more context and what we're actually doing so aurora energy research is a company deal with, uh, working on the on the, the generally long-term outlooks and power markets and we looking at uh, in-depth analytics on each of the markets so we've been currently we've been opened up in 2013 by a couple of professors from oxford which figure out that at some point the complexity which we see across the europe uh, energy markets is actually rising entering the renewables uh, into the market electric vehicles all this complexity cannot be really that easy seen and easily captured with their current model. So they thought up to invest a bit more heavily into something that into models that could capture it. From 2013 till now, we actually expanded quite a lot. So right now we have around 180 experts across the whole Europe covering everything from 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 Iberian, Iberian Peninsula up to the to the to the to Poland and southern and northern parts of Europe. Except for that, we are also present in, uh, in the United States as well as Asia and Pacifica, and uh, 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 Pacifica, especially in Australia, which has been quite an interesting market, and a lot of developments are quite rapid in that market. Um, what uh, we actually doing, and this will be also the base for what I would like to talk to you to do uh, about today. So. As you can see on the slides, we essentially base the whole idea of a company on the extensive modeling and modeling capabilities, analytical capabilities we developed and which are a basis for all of the things that we do. So we have a market leading long term focused uh, model for, for, for focusing power, gas, hydrogen, carbon and oil and carbon markets across the Europe and uh, as well as the, the globally if it's applicable. And this is actually preparing ownership of us on which we build each of these individual uh, pieces of work. And I think that most interesting, and this is where I represent the, the part, is the research publication, which I'm part of, and where we provide this huge industry, quite, quite extensive industry market outlooks, where we look actually what is going on in the market currently, how it developed, and looking at uh, the most important pieces, as well as trying to assess actually the, the key policy impact and, long, and, and the view on the market in the future. 
And today, actually, I would like to talk you about a bit more two topics, especially the Poland and Polish biomarket and then big themes that are, were we we seeing happening across the couple of last years, as well as looking forward, as well as would like to touch upon actually something that is very much uh, the, uh, a common uh, link to the uh, power markets and uh, in general the the, the, more, the way we trained and the way that uh, that um, that uh, renewables, which has been a huge part of energy transition has been going forward. So we'll look in a second part a bit more into the CFD and how interesting uh, the linkages it has to the spot market. So let's start with uh, with this part, with the with the with our outlook on the market and general themes that we can see across the whole whole market. And this slide you can see three main points of or three challenges or three areas of the development we've seen in there, which essentially drive the Polish power market. Firstly, this is quite obvious and given the recent uh, ETS prices, this is more and more visible, but Poland, because of the age and poor efficiency of the coal cloud, uh, assets, will face quite quick economic coal exit. And also, not only the, the, the age and poor efficiency and the exposure to carbon markets will, 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 will contribute to it, but also different European regulations, such as 550 gram rule, which essentially will keep the, um, uh, will, will cuts all the capacity payments for those plants. And what we see is that all but the newest plants will quickly become unprofitable. And as soon as the capacity market contracts, they will retire, which we expect, as you will see in the next slides, within the next decade. Obviously, there is a plan for the National Agency for Security Supplies. So the Polish government, is, and this is one of the things that is, is visible, Pond, the Polish government will be looking into how to slow down due to the social constraints on the on the mining sites and generally linkages of the between the power markets and the coal mining to slow down this decommissioning. Oh, details are currently unknown. The second part of the development is the renewables. This has been one of the most interesting markets across to Europe with uh, firstly hit it by the high CO2 prices expected quite a uh, huge expect um, um, we've seen the explosion of uh, power prices in and in, 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 in Poland already in 2018 and the second wave right now we are already seeing with the with the with the uh, increase in the EU2 prices. There is a flip uh, the positive flip side of that is that it obviously uh, improves the economics of our, of our renewables and we've seen a faster renewables build out across both through the governmental actions but also very successful governmental subsidies for the rooftop which has been changing the way that the renewables market uh, works um we see that uh, CFD auctions, which I will mention later, uh, will continue to 2027. We don't know that yet the procurement type and targets. We definitely don't know that in the future, in the next couple of years, we'll see a huge increase in a, and a continuous increase in our renewables uh, in Poland. And we will also see the, inc uh, the inclusion of the offshore that has been one of the focal points of a Polish policy. And last to finish off on the sort of big themes from a political level, the one existing theme that we can see already in those first two points is the policy uncertainty. The government is, for example, pursuing a plan to construct six gigawatts of a new class starting late 30s, in the mid 30s. However, we see the financing challenges, ambitious commission timelines, and fast drop of the base load, lig base load lignite capacities means that this is to be it means we consider this turn realistic and despite EU level commitment of achieving net zero by 2050 no policy is shaped and is there, there is no clear strategy exist currently for achieving this target and the policies that has been developed by the Polish government has been um, rather conservative on that front. With did a bit of introduction into, into into sort of key themes, I would like to right now jump into actually looking what is have, what happens in in uh, in terms of the power price across last years and what we can expect in the next next years. 
So let's jump first with the gas price. Let's shortly just recap the, the commodities which we will, will, will underneath that and then ever for changing themes. Obviously, in this slide, you can see three main uh, commodities that that's that and then look I look out on the commodities we for for the for, for, for pond on the both on the gas prices, coal prices, and carbon prices. And while this carbon prices can which we can see has uh, is is we can consider quite con um, moderate given recent developments, this already puts a lot of pressure in the college market and everything that we'll see after the, 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 the uh, for, uh, over forthcoming and uh, legislation pieces such as Fit for 55, this will obviously just sharpen and will increase those prices. So we'll, we will see actually even more drastic changes to the Polish market, even, even the, the, those but already with this prices, we can see quite a, a lot of interesting uh, themes occurring. We also expect the gas prices to, to increase over the next uh, next next 10, uh, 10 years, and the coal prices to remain stable, which will also lose importance. And we'll see, see this shift into gas prices and carbon prices actually being a decisive factor on what is the power price in part. What it actually means in terms of the power prices. So on this slide, you can see uh, our expectations of a uh, of a baseload prices on, uh, on, uh, over the next 30 years, as well as a bit of a historical look. So back in 2015, when we seen the quite low ETH prices, this has been rather a, a quite cheap market, especially also compared in terms of the, the the power prices. But as soon as we already see 2018 an increase in ETH prices, this has been a rather in fast increase. Of the of the wholesale prices on uh, um, happening in that period, and at this point, Poland, having one of the most carbon emissive um, power sectors across Europe, is noting one of the highest power prices across Europe, uh, with around level of 217, 300 for this level. And um, we see this being just a consequence of quite high uh, emissivity of the Polish power sector and the fact that there is still quite a lot of coal parts in the system, which will be look into the in the detail and later and quite high the CO2 prices. What are we actually seeing across the next three decades? And I will focus especially on the next 10 years because this is really interesting what we're going to see across this decade. Firstly, we expect that the power prices will actually go down within the next couple of years. And what is behind it? Right now, we have a system which is very much constrained by the coal capacities. We have quite a lot of coal capacities ending the marriage order that are locked by the capacity market contracts and essentially are the only plants they can operate. And hence, any kind of a CO2 prices that we, any kind of CO2 prices we see in the market right now are being translated quite quickly to the very high prices and in uh, and, and the Polish market. Across the next five years, we'll see a lot of these core assets being starting to slow and slowly and very quickly after 2025, which will come in later, to drop out of the market and being replaced rather by the gas plants um, or um, the gas plants a bit more simple in this in CCGTs or this combined cycle gas plants or OCGTs. Interestingly, also, this is the period when we'll see a huge rise in renewables. So government has auctioned quite a lot of renewables already right now, as well as there's different, uh, across the different subsidy schemes. And we can see this starting to, to, to have an havoc on the power prices till, till, till mid of this decade. And then for after 2025, we actually start um, um, the prices, the, we see the price starting to increase from this period. And one of the key themes of that is that we will start move from the market, which is mostly run or, or the, where the price is being set by the coal plants into the system where with less and less coal plants and much higher suit and higher suit prices will start to shift the gas plants to be the one that actually uh, close the marriage out. And this combined with the increase in the CO2 and the gas prices will actually again Start um, uh, starts work as a as an upside pressure for the for the prices raising them to the 2030s.
we see this trend um, um, still, still occurring till till 2040s of a slight increase in the power prices, and as well as this is the period we, but this is being uh, coupled also with the growth of renewables, which we expect given those prices and given the the, the other series of technology, we expect them to decrease, um, and at in a full decade to actually as when more and more renewables will add, be added to the system to actually turn this even to to working as a pressure at, 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 as a downside risk. Interestingly, this is a, obviously a yearly average. What we will expect across the next de de uh, years is an increase in volatility with more and more renewables in the system, with more of the um, with uh, with 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 uh, more flexible assets such as gas plants uh, and CCGs. This will increase the uh, uh, intermittency in in in, in the market, especially as we will we'll saturate the market for renewables and start to actually decrease this keep those sometimes at the merit of the full of renewables. What it means in terms of the capacities and uh, for, for the Polish market. So the one key thing, coal is increasingly being replaced by the gas and big, this is because the local profitability makes gas more competitive um, in, a, in a capacity market. So gas plants will serve two things. Firstly, they will actually be providing a new base load and we will be providing new capacity, new generation. But also secondly, they will have this advantage which the, which, which the, uh, the capacity market, which core assets don't have. And what we see is that across the next five years, as long as the capacity markets are, are in place, that's essentially coal plants that are in the market and will um, that, that are still in the market and have a capacity and will be also forced uh, um, working as a uh, will, will it will keep the, the emissivity and the prices in the plant quite high. Uh, we see increase in the next 10 years also of the of the renewables that will obviously put down this pressure and this Overall, uh, 14 gigawatts of solar, 12 gigawatts of onshore, 6 gigawatts of uh, of uh, offshore capacity, which we expect by 2030. This is all already subsidized assets that we expect to be going to come in the market. And then from 2030, we actually expect that this only coal plants that will be left in the market will just be the newest coal plants that will be the only ones that will be efficient to run um, at, uh, and given the high CO2 price world and those being replaced by the gas plants that with the things of the with the with the help of the capacity market will provide the security of supply over the next decade and this will allow actually for the much bigger merchant based build out of the renewable capacities which we accept, uh, which we expect actually to more uh, to be added more and more with it, with the coming years. Obviously, we looked at capacities, but to to finish off the and, and this year, so also the other side. Let's think about the uh, electric product inputs. So Poland, as you may might and might might already suspect, given how much of the coal capacities we have in the system, is right now producing most of this and of its energy from coal, both from hard coal and lignite. We see here that more than 60, more than uh, in 2015, more than 83% of the generation was produced for coal assets. And this is also the reason why we see those high prices. And this is also the reason what might be might be one of the first interesting points which we see uh, in, in, on, in this graph that with the red, uh, with, with the red, with the red part, we actually upon experience quite a lot of interconnection flows across the last uh, years and will remain this false as long as we will actually see the, the the carbon emissivity of a polish sector being high it's just looking from the neighbors that happened for example germany that has been much better at, at the decarbonizing its power mix this will be a natural tendency which we'll see and as long as the pond will remain this high emissivity it will remain actually a net importer of electricity. In general, we expect total Polish generation to rise by 50%, 55% by 2050. And we expect that the, while the capacity of a the film stacks will be kept relatively constant, the generation share will start to change. As we will be adding more and more renewables um, in the, into the system, the running hours of a gas will be lower and lower. And this will actually also be one of the reasons of the lower price in the market. We expect that in the next 
10 years um, based on the on the on the on the on the on the uh, amount of we uh, we are adding by the subsidies is we actually expect over 40% of the of 40% of the generation share to be actually covered by the renewables and we see a decreasing and decreasing uh, role of the coal assets that even will stay with a, with a capacity will be outplaced in the merit of the by the gas plants. The obvious question which right now is um, can be asked is OK, so what's actually the economic situation of renewables? And on this slide, you can see the renewable capture prices. So generation weighted uh, prices that will that include the profit risks. Poland has been quite an interesting market, and this also is the one of the reasons of the success of the solar capacities across the next uh, 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 across last year is that point due to its low penetration of uh, solar capacities has still has still experienced the, over the last year and still has the remaining part of not a discount to the base load price in terms of the of the solar profit but actually a upside by decreasing and cutting those midday peaks that occur and by shaving off this 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 peak can attain the higher prices what we expect actually is that Across the next ten year, uh, ten, ten, in the, in the, this this premium to actually disappear within the next year and move to the discount as soon as we'll see more and more capacity, more capacity being added to the system. Currently, with a with a development of a solar capacity in the system being very rapid, we expect this process to actually already come to the discount. Similarly, the onshore wind, which has a much higher uh, installed capacity, already in this year, um, and this. We, that the capture prices we expect actually to remain have a higher and higher discount to the base load as we will be approaching later years. So already in 2013, you can see that there is an increasing uh, discount to the to the to the base load prices, uh, rising from around 10% up to almost 20% in, uh, for for the onshore you know, compared to the base load and 12% for the solar, and in the 30s and 40s. Then reaching up to in 2050, up to 24% for the for the for the for the solar in terms of the of the discount to the uh, to the um, to the to the base load. This is obviously coupled with the fact that we expect a lot of renewables in Poland to actually be actually with the absence of the of the strict and, and ambitious policy policy to be driven by um, the build out. And with that view on renewables, I wanted to take a little bit more deep look into the CFD uh, system because uh, some of you may, may aware, Poland has uh, Poland has uh, has uh, has been procuring most of its as uh, most of its capacity under renewables with the CFD system, and it has quite an interesting linkages to the spot market, which we don't actually see in a lot of European markets, and. There are essentially three main pieces how the Polish CFD contains this link to the spot market. Firstly, remaining CFD profile is being there is some remaining pro CFD profile risk in the in the Polish CFD. So the way that the Polish CFD is calculated is actually being benchmarked it's a, against daily average prices. I will go into that in detail on the next slide, but this essentially means that you are not good if you if you're going for the auction, you're not going to get 100 percent of your of your uh, of your strike price if if you win. Secondly, there is an option of one of rescheduling of the generation amounts on in the Polish Polish market, and once the CFD is granted, so you can because it's based on on a volume. The Polish CFD scheme allows for not all, uh, not, does not allow for the of, of the total generation amounts or strike price, but it's possible to adjust within the years. So we can actually think of the schedule that fits us and uh, a bit better in terms of years. And last, and I think quite very interesting and a very interesting and quite complicated part is that, that there is an option to continue to optimize between the CFD and the spot market. So the Polish CFD scheme is essentially based on the uh, volume. You not nobody really looks at the capacity, but rather looks at the volume that you've uh, contracted. And based on that, you can actually have this flexibility of choosing where you're placing your generation, um, whether you want to go in the CFD or whether you're in the spot market, and which is more beneficial. 
Um, I'm not going to go into more details all of this. I think that I would focus on the first part, which is actually a risk and in hand that sense is should be quite interesting in that view. So there is quite a lot of things that you can see in this slide, but I will try to make it as simple as possible uh, for, for explanation. Essentially, the policy of the scheme, it does guarantee the price for the generators and procures the volume, not the capacity. The support is essentially a symmetrical CFD, um, so you being remunerated in a few below and uh, at, at the, 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 the strike price in terms of your revenues and, and you have to pay back if you are above. The CFD auctions um, are being calculated, that support is though calculated as, as a difference between the CFD auction strike price and average daily day ahead price. Essentially, you being your level of support is being locked once a day, which you can see on the slide on the left. So essentially, uh, on the on the on the chart on the left. So essentially, in the first, you can see seven days of operation, and as you can see, the level of a subsidy per in what is per megawatt hour will actually uh, change only during the days, not within the day. Which means that the part, uh, what it means that you will have to fix, the, the, and this will be related just to the average pr price of all the transactions in, in the market, in, in, all the, in, in the spot market. Um, this obvious, what it actually uh, means for the for the for the for the rest developers, and what it means for the way that you you you, you operate your asset. You're selling normally, and we can see on the next slide. So there's a two illustrative weeks uh, of the of the generation in the system which we can see here. First, it's a intraday risk and intraday um, uh, exemplary day of uh, of, a, of a spot day ahead market in 2020, and then on the right in 2030. The orange line is day ahead market price, where the or uh, the red price the red um, red dotted line is the benchmark price. So the average daily 24 hour daily price and the green one is the revenue or the price that you captured as your asset for the solo so essentially for decreasing this daily peak and you can see that this is actually above the benchmark price so you will have a uh, you you will be trading you're trading um at the premium to, towards the daily average price and even though that you're being settled uh, towards the red red benchmark price, so you actually have a premium on that. Situation obviously changes when we're going ten years ahead, when we have much more solar capacity in the system. As more and more capacity will be added to the system, there will be a big, which all of them are concentrated more or less in the same hours. This will mean that the prices during the day will drop, and they will drop the most for the hours when the solar will. Will, uh, will work, essentially cannibalizing those hours. And as more renewables we add to the system, um, this will depress the, cap the, the capture prices, which means that the previously positive or, or positively being on above the benchmark price, uh, solar price, the, uh, the, or the green one, will actually drop below the benchmark price, which means that your revenues from a day ahead market will actually not be equal to the um, and and uh, your revenues from the ad market with the subsidy will not equal to your uh, um, to your to your to your strike price, meaning that you will be left uh, that this ben the difference between the benchmark price and salt will not be covered, and you will be left with a part of the, the profit risk. If we look at the what it means in terms of the the the, the variation and uh, on the individual sources, which is quite interesting because of the way that we're thinking about the renewable sources, they will be different. Both onshore and solar will be differently affected. So this variation essentially boils down to intraday variation. If you uh, have a if that if you have quite a lot depending on your profile, you essentially being that that's anything that will happen very drastically for you within the day, you will not be covered, and everything that will happen outside the day will and in a more and more longer term perspective will be covered. So the seasonal part you being covered under the CFD, whether you're not being covered are for the intraday variations. This has a different consequence for the solar and onshore. On the top left part on this slide, you can see the onshore discount. The blue one 
you can see the discount if you're selling under the CFD uh, to that strike price, so that your remaining profit risk. With a great, with a uh, great one, you can see the discount to the base load. So what's your profit risk just selling on, on, on the spot? What we're seeing is that there is a very limited this profit risk being collected off of onshore, and there is a very simple explanation behind it. When it, the wind blows, it probably depresses the prices across the whole day, and it, when it winds, uh, when it when it blows, it uh, bl uh, when the wind blows, it blows for more than a few hours. It's rather the duration of the days. But when we're thinking about the similar situation for the solar, we see that actually the risk that you're being left if you would spend a sell on the spot to the base load is very similar in level as to the risk that you will be left under the CFD. Um, and this has an, a consequence in the fact that most of the solar generation will be concentrated within the day and will actually will have actually we'll see that the prior hours where you generate will be lower than the, all the hours within the day. And with this was last one slide, I would like to give the floor to 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 to, 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 to the colleague Dina and give uh, and think I would like to thank you very much for 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 for, for the same presentation. Hello everyone. I hope you everybody can see my slides now. Okay, um I'm I'm here now. So you will I, I hope uh, you have heard very interesting information from Philip. It actually a little bit puzzled my head, so uh, my presentation will be much easier. Uh, there will be less charts and more words than numbers. Um, my name is Dina Lashova and I work for Power Exchange Central Europe. Uh, some of you may have already met me in person or even seen me in some of the previous webinars. Power Exchange Central Europe is a subsidiary um, of uh, European Energy Exchange, and we are covering the Central and Southeastern European markets, including Poland. So that is that is why you can you can see us uh, now on this webinar series. Uh, if we have if we have some uh, of um, like attendees that are returning, uh, some of you may have already seen these slides, but uh, I think practice makes perfect. So it will be good to repeat here. Uh, what is actually available at EEX for the Polish market, uh, what standardized products are listed, what is uh, what is coming in, in the few years. Please feel free to, um, of course, listen to my words, but also digest Philip's presentation and you can start, uh, start uh, sharing your questions now because um, our colleagues from, from EEX will, will go through them uh, so that we can, we can um, uh, smoothly uh, transit from from my presentation to the Q&A session. So as uh, I will start with a, with a nice slide that was actually prepared by my French colleague from Epic Spot, but I borrowed it because it's it's very nice and complex. Uh, some of you have already heard that Epic Sports now started also the Polish offering since uh, February. You are able to trade via Epic Spot the couple to 12 o'clock uh, auction. So uh, with this uh, extension of product at Epic Spot, we can say that EX Group is now a one-stop shop uh, offering also for, for Polish market, which means that at EX you can hedge your fluctuations uh, using the futures market then via epex spot uh, you can you can trade the day ahead and value your production consumption intraday uh, for the flexibility and on the aftermarket manage all the imbalances all uh, all of those uh, market segments are have one common clearing house which is obviously european uh, commodity clearing ecc also a subsidiary of eex 
where you can find also a lot of benefits of one clearing house. Uh, the first thing that you can use uh, one bank for all the on the, all the transactions. Of course, if this is not of your um, um, to your benefit, some some companies prefer to have different streams for spot and, and futures market. It is also possible to use two different banks. Uh, clearing banks, even if you are trading via via the same exchange, but uh, basically you have um, you have all the standardized reporting solutions and uh, feeds uh, and stuff like that. And uh, on top of the trading and clearing services, we are we are able to provide on the group level the richest market data offering via our data source. We of course provide remit reporting, uh, emir reporting, as well as transparency services now on our transparency platform. Since I'm working on the derivative side, I will not spend much time talking about the spot market, so I will focus here on the derivatives market. So this is just for uh, for your uh, those who are here for the first time to get to know what is actually available on the EEX side, uh, those who are like uh, returning attendees, this is just a small, uh, small uh, repetition that uh, we offer the, let's say the standard scale of the financial futures product, which means that that there is no uh, physical delivery. The product is only financial settled, uh, which is um, very uh, useful for a different uh, different group of uh, of trading companies. It can be of use of for the utilities to to hedge the production or sellers to hedge the supply. Uh, it is very easy to to start trading for uh, speculative purposes, so um, it it's, it opens up the floor to uh, let financial players who can bring some more liquidity to the market. The products are, are available for the exchange trading, but as well as trade registration, which means exchange trading is the so-called order book trading that you have a direct access to the. Um, uh, to the uh, EEX order book, you can put your orders and, and trades directly on the EEX screen. A but trade registration means that uh, you can use your broker or even even uh, conclude a bilateral deal. And if both counterparties are EEX members, uh, you can register the trade for uh, for clearing afterwards within, of course, certain certain time limit. The trade registration uh, is uh, specifically useful for, for example, PPA hedging for the long, long term hedges and, and you will see on, on some of the uh, slides uh, later that uh, this functionality has been uh, already used quite widely. The financial fulfillment and all the financial settlement is provided by ECC. So for those who are already trading on EEX, are the members of EEX and, and trade any other financial product, you shall be able to start uh, trading the product almost immediately uh, after some conversation with your clearing bank. But there is no need to do any, any, any additional paperwork towards EEX because EEX grants the admission or the, the trading permission in general for all financial products. So uh, what actually you can trade now are the is the current and next six months, so then seven quarters and six years. We are uh, fighting for uh, introducing also the short term futures because we believe that the liquidity to Polish market will be coming from um, the to from both direction because uh, on the upcoming uh, or increasing importance of the renewables, there will be also a higher need to trade uh, also smaller contracts than month like days, weekends and weeks. Uh, but on the other hand, for the long term hedges, of course, we will uh, we will need to have more um, long term products. So the short futures are hopefully coming next year. We are also fighting for uh, or kind of uh, trying to to be able to offer more than six years uh, up to nine or even cal plus 10 years for the long term hedges. This project is currently ongoing on EEX will be uh, introduced firstly on the most liquid markets like on Germany, uh, Spain and 
I'm not sure what about the other market, probably Italian or French or French. Uh, we hope this will be this will be introduced soon on these markets, and when, once uh, once these markets are uh, all set and done, then then we can also continue introducing the longer term uh, contracts also for the less liquid markets, like such as Polish market, Hungarian market, and and other markets where we will see the um, uh, demand. Uh, in case you are uh, already a uh, trading participants on EEX, uh, below the, uh, the list of the contracts that are available, you can also see the product codes under which you can you can find the, the product in TT. Uh, of course, for example, the, the trade board IDs are slightly different. There are written, written here uh, as well, or you can also contact your uh, trade board uh, key account to, to help you with the mapping. With the EEX or sorry, the, the EPEX uh, offering of the Polish market, there is also a new service line coming, which which is the physical fulfillment of the financial futures. Uh, so we this is not available yet, but we hope this will be available uh, before the year end. So in the Q3, maybe we will be able to to offer this service to our trading participants which means that if you trade financially, uh, the futures financially, Polish power financially, and you still have the needs of, of the physical delivery, uh, you can do it via the spot market. Uh, there will be a very simple uh, procedure, the same as for, for German market. So you will just, uh, you will just um, at the end of the month, on the monthly basis, you will provide a request to EEX. Um, how much of your position of the upcoming months you want to have delivered in physically. We have also available the location spreads uh, because the, especially on, in the central and southeastern Europe, because the, the market is uh, quite fragmented, the spread trading is becoming more and more uh, interesting for for traders of course there are like two camps of traders there are traders that really still still prefer to do the outright but uh, but there is uh, more and more trades coming from the spread uh, recently my colleague uh, is is uh, making some statistics and and the most recent number is that almost 30 percent of uh, the trades that are uh, done on the central and southeastern european markets are coming from uh, spreads there are the spread products. Um, we have, of course, available time spreads uh, for all maturities, but uh, but um, here I'm talking more, more about the location spreads. Uh, it is also known as the inter-product spread that um, uh, you can find it, for example, in TT uh, using the abbreviation IPS, like inter-product spread. It's uh, usually with the neighboring market and, and with the benchmark market. And uh, the spreads are basically just the matching functionality of the trading system. So it's a synthetic product. Um, it consists of two outright products. So there is no uh, ISIN assigned to a spread product, but um, or, or special special product codes. Of course, in Trayport, the spread has their different ID, but on the on the exchange level, there is no special code or ISIN assigned to a spread product because you trade um, the spread on, on the trading screen, but in the clearing you will have both legs. I didn't get that. You will have you will have both legs. Uh, sorry, my watch started to talk to me. That's funny. Uh, both legs uh, separately going to, to the clearing. Regarding the Polish market, we have also we have of course three uh, spreads available. Uh, first of all is the German Polish spread. Uh, which is probably the most interesting or will be the most interesting spread after the market coupling uh, coming now, the interim market coupling, which is available or, or coming in, in a few weeks. And uh, there is also be a, uh, the, the Czech Polish spread uh, because Czech Republic is a neighboring country from the south of Poland and also the Slovak, uh, Slovak spread. Uh, on, on this slide, these, these Polish Polish spreads are highlighted in red, but uh, of course uh, you can see the, also the other spreads uh, listed. They are grouped according to the benchmark market, so on the most uh, up left part of the map, you can see the spreads that are listed towards the German contracts. 
Uh, we have also spread listed towards the Italian contracts and also uh, towards the Hungarian contracts. So the Hungarian market is mostly benchmark market for the Southeastern Europe and Balkans, uh, like Romanian, Serbian, Slovenian, Bulgarian. Uh, very interesting is also Italian Hungarian spread, but also Hungarian Slovakian spread, or also Czech uh, and German spread. So there is a variety of, of spreads. Um, of course, um, the spread trading needs uh, a little bit of skill because uh, because people uh, the trader not used to it can get easily confused, and it happens from time to time that uh, the traders switch uh, sides and and stuff like that. So in this case, it's good to uh, be familiar with the mistrade policy of EEX so uh, that you need to call a certain number within a certain time limit. And we are, of course, able to uh, to delete the, to delete the trade. But what is important to mention when it comes to spreads, uh, because you trade at least two products with the spread, so uh, it will be always deleted only that leg which is out of the market. So the second leg which is in the market will stay. So this is this is uh, this is quite uh, just 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 a note to or remark to remember. Here we can uh, we can see on this slide. I will speed up a little bit because there are a few questions coming, but there are still still not that that many of them. So keep uh, keep going and writing. Uh, this is an overview. How was the EX standard products used for the PPA hedging? As Philip mentioned before, the, the re renewables are growing and increasing uh, very rapidly on the Polish market. And uh, there is the need, of course, to hedge the price. Uh, there are several, several uh, ways uh, how to do it, but uh, you, in case you are already a member of EEX, you can of course use this uh, standardized product uh, already offered. And uh, as we can see, um, the PPA hedging are now bringing the most of the liquidity on the Polish market. So we had we had some hedges uh, hedges done uh, at the beginning of the year 2020 and the others uh, also this year around February. Uh, there will, there will be um, there were some some products traded and, and you can see the details on the table here. In case you are interested to start trading in Poland, uh, these are the requirements for being physic being able to trade physically for example on epex spot for the spot market you of course need to have all the grid access uh, sorted out which is the transmission agreement local trade and license and some uh, some wire protocols for nominations uh, as i mentioned on the ex side it is much easier if you already are a member that it's uh, basically a one one phone call if you already uh, if you are not a member of ex uh, you can, of course, contact us for more information how to become a member. Uh, but there is also there, there is also an alternative way how to, uh, let's say, benefit from the EX liquidity without being a direct member. So there are several DMA providers um, like market access providers, either banks or other, other trading participants. Uh, so you can in, in, in a some situations I can understand that uh, that uh, the cost for uh, uh, being a direct member of, e of the EX is too high, but uh, but there are also some alternatives. As I as I mentioned at the beginning, we are also offering uh, some other services, not only the trading, but we can also offer uh, our EX Group data source, where you can find uh, customized solutions or very nice uh, desktop application. And uh, and other products, or if you are a company that uh, has the obligation to report the inside information via the transparency platform, you can of course uh, contact also our colleagues of the transparency platform and use the EX service for that. The group, the EX group data source, and as well as the EX transparency platform is not exclusively for the trading participants. Uh, it can be offered also to a third parties, not uh, not directly trading with EX. And uh, 
the remit and any reporting are, are also only for the EEX. So that was all from me. Uh, if you have any questions, so now is the good time to ask them, uh, or if you need some time to digest all the information, you can of course uh, contact us, uh, either your key account manager of EEX, or you can contact me directly, or you can use the general EEX um, uh, email address. We will be happy also to provide uh, Philip contact detail, Philip's contact details in case you have direct questions to him. And now I would like Juliana, if if you could uh, you could read those questions so that we can hear them all out and aside them. So thank you, Dina and Philip. Um, so far, we only had the question uh, if the presentation will be shared afterwards of the two of you. Um, yeah, I said yes. <laughs> So, but there are no further questions so far, um, but maybe the people are typing them at the moment. Um, yeah, do you have any frequently asked questions from the last two webinars or anything you want to add? Okay, um, I'm not sure if I'm visible now. Um, or at least you can hear me. Well, there is, there is uh, a lot of um, let's say headache is caused to the trading participants uh, is the currency because uh, the polish the spot spot market which is uh, organized by tge is uh, traded in polish lottery this is the first fixing uh, at 10 30 and as well as the second fixing so uh, the the companies are often especially the polish companies of course are are having troubles with the currency issue because their operational currency is as lottery so so euro is um, just another currency which which makes problem but surprisingly, also some international companies were um, addressing this issue. So I would like to point out that in case you are trading in the second auction, which is already coupled and provided by EPEX, the auction, the original currency of the auction is Euro. So uh, then, of course, the results are being uh, translated or recalculated to Polish Lotti and, and published by the TGE. But if you trade at EPEX spot, you will trade in Euro and this will be also the underlying in the future for the for the financial future. And uh, we see that in case your operational currency is euro, you can trade directly in euro spot as well as the financial futures and there is uh, the, the basically the issue is gone. Of course, if you have some physical obligations in uh, in poly in Poland, uh, euro uh, or Polish Lottie is still the prevailing currency, the local currency, but uh, we believe it will be slowly changing because um, there is still the CO2 and the gas price, which are the price uh, drivers of the Polish power are traded in Euro. So we believe that the, the same which happened, for example, in Czech Republic, where we, we also have a Czech Corona and uh, the currency issue was raised many times, uh, like 10, even 15 years ago, and, and the traders slowly kind of uh, got used to trade in euro so we hope this will happen also in in polish market so, so, so I kind of we have no further that. questions um yeah um, no we questions still have, we still have time so um may, maybe some some more questions will be coming I don't know if, if Juliana has a nice bird singing in the background. <laughs> so we have some summer summer spirit here. Okay, there are no questions coming up. Philip, do you want to add anything else uh, as final words? Or Dina, do you want to? Yeah, maybe give a final round. Dina Philip, who wants to be the last person speaking today? I'm happy to just um, 
maybe uh, so, so, so sort of I wouldn't I wouldn't want to add a bit more to the, what we we spoken, but I definitely as we will publish uh, the, the the presentation, feel free to reach. I think there's a quite a lot of uh, interesting uh, developments for for the, for the market. So and, and I'm very very happy to, to to get into more details of anything we we show. But at least I'm speaking for me. You know, probably similarly for for in after you also and the they just the whole presentation. But no uh, ever arching uh, schemes to add on top of what I found it. I don't know if you did that. OK, so thank you the both of you for your presentation. Thanks the audience for having time for us today. Wishing you all a good day. I wish you also a good day. Uh, as, a, as a woman, I should I should have the last word. It's a, <laughs> it's a nice habit. So, of course, as Philip said, you can feel free to reach out to us uh, independently um, um, for, for the modeling and research stuff to Philip. Uh, I, I am here also to, to give you any information about the Polish offering. I hope uh, you have enjoyed the webinar uh, and even the two webinars before. And uh, I hope we will speak soon or meet soon in person. Thank you.